Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 35. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel. And we left off the last chapter. Dinah was raped. Levi and Simeon murdered, deceit. Jacob's worried where he's dwelling. Because everyone's going to hear about it. They're going to hear about what his son's done. God steps in and says, Leave. Go back to Bethel. And this is where we get the expression, going back to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Now remember where you came from. We all have, as born again Bible believing Christians, we all have that place. I know where my place is. And I can't physically go back to that place right now. It would take much traveling. The people are not, are, are most are already going to heaven. But we are to remember that place where we met God, wherever it is. And you don't need to know what date, what time. But do you remember the place where you and God met as a sinner and as a savior? Where Christ came into your life, saved your soul. Your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you had the Holy Spirit come and dwell with it. Get back to that place, all right. Go back to Calvary. And this place happens to be the house of God. It's not a church building. It's where God indwelt in you. And Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, his whole clan, put away the strange gods that are among you. All right, there's been an overflowing of strange gods. Now, this could have happened in verse 27 of chapter 34. And the sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. They took the sheep. I mean, they took everything. They spoiled it all. Now, this is where maybe some of the gods came from. But when we look at that, let's go back to chapter 31 of Genesis. Genesis 31, where it's named. And we'll look at two verses here, 31, 19. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. And what are those images? Aids to worship? Let's look at verse 30. And now, though thou wouldest needs be gone, because thou sore longest forth after thy father's house. Yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? The Bible calls those aid to worship gods, small g-o-d-s. It looks like that Rachel stealing from her father has grown through the, the camp. It can also be as they're traveling around, they're picking up gods. But the thing is, in the camp, I'm on my way back to where God met me. There are gods in my life. There are gods in my family. There are gods and people that are all around me. Put away those strange gods that are among you and be clean. You're not clean with gods. And we all pick up gods. And watch this. This is a particular scene. And change your garments. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with the fashion of Jacob's people. They're not dressed right. 
Maybe they're underdressed. Maybe they're dressed for gods. Change your garments, get rid of those gods. And that's all it says for his garment. Something wrong with the dress. Let us arise and go up to Bethel. Now, why go up to Bethel? Gotta be in a mountain. You realize all the mountain climbing that these people do? They're not weaklings. They're not, you know, they climb. Jesus climbed up and down mountains. Moses, I don't know how many times he went up in, uh, in Mount Sinai. Hey, he's going up, he's going down, he's going up, he's going down. I, I, I try to count that and keep losing count how many times he went up and down. And I will make there an altar unto God. Ladies and gentlemen, family, we're going back to where God and I got together. Now remember, Rachel, Leah, the handmaids, and all the boys have never been there. I'm going back to where I met God, where God and I met at the, when my brother was angry with me before I came and met you guys. A whole new life for Jacob. And yet he still has a Bethel. And he has picked up, his family has picked up some things that need not to be so. we got to get rid of them. But make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress. And we know about how he dreamed in the ladder and God spoke to him. And was with me in the way which I went. And he's been blessing Jacob. He's been protecting Jacob. Uh, God came to Laban one night and said, you better not do anything harm to him. Now that's we know that is true because that's Laban's words. And we know that Laban acknowledges that through Jacob and God of Jacob, Isaac, and, J and Abraham. Man, he's been blessed. He had nothing. And then with Jacob, he's, with God, he's got a lot. Jacob has got flocks and herds and people and children and wives. They gave unto Jacob all the strange gods. All of them. Which were in their hand. So something they're, they're carrying. And all their earrings which were in their ears. Now let's look at chapter 24 verse 47 of Genesis. 24, 37. 24, 47. Excuse me, 47. And I asked her. He said, Whose daughter art thou? And he said, The daughter of Bethel, Nathor's son, whom Milcah bare unto him. And he put earrings in upon her face, and the braces on her hand. Now this is good earrings. Not all earrings are bad. You see them out through the Bible. But let's look at bad earrings. Exodus 32, 3. Exodus... 32 3 and you'll see when you get to the law an ear that has a piercing in it represents servitude if the, if the man says hey I'm not leaving you I'm going to serve you I love my wife and children I'm going to stay and serve you the Bible says you're to bore a hole in the ear and what, what you need to realize when you teach your daughters before they get that pierced ear you got to show them what the Bible says servitude so with that pierced ear to, for your daughters Remind that door, you're a servant of Jesus Christ. 32.3 of Exodus. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them to Aaron. Sounds like a priestly offer. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. Now here are bad earrings. He boils them up and he puts them into the pot, melts them up, and then he makes a golden calf to worship other gods. So earrings do have that that they're good, but they're also bad. How you use them, and you know some earrings you look at them they, they look like basketball hoops, and that's just to get the attention. Look at me, you know, you know the oh, ding chandelier. chandeliers. I mean, a little earring in there. I mean. Dolphin or you know crab whatever That's okay, you know But when you use it to gr draw attention to yourself or it, it becomes an idol or God then it's wrong And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem 
That's the truth. I wonder how many people have read this in the past and gone out to Shechem and try to find this stuff. Because the gods are not going to undig themselves. Now, if they have not been undug by man, you're going to go over there. You're not going to find, okay, a big hole and a bunch of gods leaning against a palm tree. Say, hi, I was wondering who's going to pick us up. They're still in the dirt. They're still buried if man has not unearthed them. Now, my God, Jesus Christ, was put into a hole in the ground with a rock that sealed. And when the women came to, to do his, his burial, man, they said that the rock was rolled away. And Jesus stood outside and approached Mary like, hi, how you doing? I'm alive and well. And that's one of the things I've, I've heard from a, a missionary. Some of the things that they'll do when they witness these people that have multiple gods. is One guy one time I heard went and took those gods and put them in the ground. Buried them. For a woman who got saved and trusted Christ. But she wouldn't let go of those gods. And three days later he went out with a shovel and dug where he buried. And pulled them out of the ground and showed the woman say. What kind of gods are these? They can't come out of the ground. And that moment, that woman dropped them and left them. Because her God now, Jesus Christ, overpowered those gods. And they journeyed. And I got a map. And I forgot to send it to you. I'll send it out and I'll put it on the website. <clears throat> and they journeyed. And the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them. God is allowing them to return. There may be people, you know, there may be robbers or thieves or other nations that are ready to kill Jacob in his And God's like, uh-uh, don't you dare do that. Did you hear what those two boys did in Shechem? Told those men, yeah, we'll, we'll be part of you if you circumcise yourselves and went in and destroyed the whole city. Whoa, don't mess with Jacob and Levi or Simeon. See, God used that, even though it's wrong and it's a sin. That's probably one of the things that God used. He just don't touch them. Like he came to Laban that night and said, don't you dare touch them. Now, God may not have used Levi and Simeon. He just may put in the fear and the terror. Hey, listen, those are my people. Now, in the tribulation period, God says, I got a flight for them. I got a place prepared for them. There's a place in the wilderness, and I want you to go. Jesus said, pray that your flight be not in the winter. Pray that you don't have any, you're not with child or have a child. But Satan's still going to chase them. But Jacob's protected now. So they journey, and the terror of God was, was upon the cities that were round about them. And they did not pursue it after the sons of Jacob. So I'm going to assume, you can throw in the garbage, that what Levi and Simeon did, who, that got around. Listen, they had news squads without television, radio, all right around the world that had already spread. When they came to, to uh, what's her name? Rahab in, in Jericho, we've heard the fear. We heard what you did over there. Wait a minute, wait a minute. But how could you do that? Because you didn't have the, the, the news from the television program. Oh, yes, they did. You know, when Paul goes through the book of Acts, and he's at these seaports, he would hear news that was going around all Europe and, and, and Israel and Africa. Because sailors would come off the ship and say, hey, you won't believe what I heard over here. And, you know, when I was over here, they were having this big murder trial for this guy who killed his two wives and his girlfriend and had some kind of meat sauce or something like that. And when I was over here, man, they're, they're having this trial about this guy who, who killed a whole bunch of people. And, and then when I was over here, and they're having a great celebration, an election or something like that. And I was, news got around, even though you didn't have the, the t TV camera. Man has been great at communicating news around the world. So, so Jacob came to Luz, which is in the land of Cana. That is Bethel. Bethel is Luz. Luz is Bethel. Now, uh, Jacob renamed it. House of God. He and all the people that were with him. Okay. Well, how has God blessed Jacob since the first time he met God? Because when he was at Bethel, that's the first time he met God. When I met God, I had a, as far as salvation, I had a grandmother, brother, an aunt, and uncle. I don't know about my grandfather. 
I think I think he's a lot. I think he was saved long, even in the Catholic Church. But he read his Bible. He loved the Lord. I, I, he could have been saved even then. I had Brother Caswell and Brother Whitmore. I forgot to count on my fingers. Well, I had those people there the day I got saved. My grandma's living room at her coffee table in Waterford, Connecticut. I went to church the next day. I gained and told everyone, I said, listen, I received Christ as my Savior. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. What I'm going to do, I went and witnessed to my dad that afternoon. You know what? I gained more people at church that day. I met more and more. Here I stand. It was 1987. This is 2017. I've got a lot of friends in Christ. They are in heaven already. They are still alive. I've got many that walked away from me. I, I'm married. i got two children. God's blessing me. And yet still i got to take all that and go back to my Bethel. And remember who I was and what I was without God. I was a sinner going to hell. And you know what that's also? That's also the Lord's Supper because you're supposed to remind yourself what Christ has done for yourself and what he's going to do That He's going to come and take us home. And he built there an altar and called the place Eli or El Bethel. El Bethel. So that's interesting because from Genesis 28, 19, he called the place Bethel. The house of God. Now it is God rather than the place. God, house, God. Jacob has grown so much. It's not this place where just rock and the angels were. It is the God that brought. Listen, the place Bethel itself has done nothing for me. Waterford, Connecticut has done nothing for me. There are many churches in Waterford, Connecticut that I know about that never came and tried to witness to me. Never knocked on our door. It's not Waterford. It's the God that met me where God met me. It is God that has gotten me this far. Forget about the house of God. It's God. Because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. I fled from the face of hell. I did not want to go to hell. And there are all kinds of reasons why people get saved. No same story is for the same person. And this is interesting. But Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died. Let's go back to 2459. And I, this is something I just saw today. 249. 2459. Genesis 2459. And they sent away Rebecca, their sister, and her nurse. Well, what's her name? Deborah. You know, you know what Rebecca did? Son, I want you to go to my, my, my father's house. I want you to find a woman there because you're not going to marry any women around here. It's going to be no, <coughs> no mixed marriages here like your brother Esau. And what we're not told is I'm going to send Deborah with you. She knows the way, and she knows who my family And we don't read about that till now. Because he does not get back to where his, brother, where his father is until 21 to 26. And I found it interesting that here, Rebecca's nurse that they gave her goes with her son, Jacob. Something about that. She died. And she was buried beneath Bethel under an oak. Uh-oh. We got an oak where there's gods and earrings buried. And we got an oak where there's a body buried. You got to pay attention to oaks in the Bible. And the name of it was called Alan Bakas, the Oak of Weeping. What do we got to say about Deborah? When she died, she caused everyone to weep. She was that mess. She was that dear to everyone that when she dies on the way going home, they were crying. The Bible says when Jacob was going off to his burial, he had Egyptians crying and bawling for him. 
that there were people in the field looking like, wow, that guy must be really loved. And God appeared unto Jacob again. So Jacob gets a lot of appearings of God. When he came out of Penranum and blessed him. That's where his father's house is. Isaac's and Rebekah's family. The family of Abraham. And God said unto thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob. But this is twice this has happened. But Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. Israel's name begins truly set forth by God at El Bethel. Not the place of God, but God of the place. Somebody puts a lot of effort. The church, the church building. Oh, look at the pretty church. Don't mess up our church building. We got people coming and clean the church all day long. It's not about that. What about the God of the church? Is it more interested in the building? Or is it more interested in God? Do we have a building program or do we have a God program? How about every once in a while just taking all the chairs, going outside, out of the building, and go out where God is in his nature and have an outdoor service? Do you realize that the, that the revivals of America were outside they were tent mean. They were be in fields. I forget oh, the great name there, the one they went to. He'd go out in the field, get up on top of a rock and preach the gospel, and they'd get saved by the masses. And no reference to the church, Catholic Church. They met in barns. They met in civic halls that they rented. And with those civic halls, there'd be still too many people. In the Bible, you don't, in the book of Acts, you don't see a church building. You see houses. Get off the building and get on to God. Israel. God's house God. What a start for a nation. I know it began with Abraham, but the name Israel. Thy name is Jacob. Shall not, thy name shall not be called anymore Jacob, sir planter. But Israel, prince, shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. That's it. That's the God. God of all gods. There he is. God Almighty. Be fruitful. Produce yourself. Make fruit. And multiply. Make babies. Jacob did a pretty good job at that. Thirteen children. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. The nation of Israel. And kings, Solomon, David, Asa, and I just keep on, and Jesus Christ, shall come out of thy loins inside you. That was supposed to be Esau. But Esau sold it. So for a pottage of beans, God is saying, Jacob, you're blessed. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Hosea in the book of Romans said twice, Verily, verily, I hate you, Jacob. I hate you, Esau. Isn't that interesting? And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, no Ishmael. United Nuts of New York City. That land belongs to the Jew. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And that song, this is my land, this is your land, it's a bunch of crap. America has nothing to do in the Bible. There's no purple mountains. The shiny sea has been polluted. But there is one piece of land on this planet that God says it is mine. It has been fought by nations and by armies and by looters, by kings, by presidents, by all nations. The news has to go back to Jerusalem at least once a week. And that land, God said, the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to thee will I give it. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 
it's going to go to the 12 boys. That's the land grant. Write that down. Settle it down. It's in the Bible. Title deeds recorded. That land belongs to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Signed, sealed, delivered. No matter what any Abraham, Arab says, no matter what Middle Eastern says, no matter what the president says, no matter what the United Nuts say, no matter what North Korea says, I don't care. God says that land belongs to them. And I'll tell you how much it belongs to them. When the millennium happens, I'm going to redesign the whole planet, and it's going to be one high place, and it's all the world's going to be Jerusalem, and that land will be their land. And since the land is cursed, Genesis 3, I will take this earth, I will take the heavens, I will melt it with a fervent heat, it will roll up as a scroll, it will go by. Bye bye, Mother Earth, clunk and bunk and garbage. And for that Jew, I'll make a new earth. And the capital of all the universe will be the new Jerusalem. So, to thee I will give it, and to thy seed, name the twelve boys, though right, right now one boy hasn't been born yet. And notice Lee is not even mentioned. Last time we saw Leah's chapter 34, and we're going to see her name just because she was a child of Leah, but that's it. And to thy seed after thee will I give the land. Title deed by God, signed, delivered, in black and white. You can take it to any courtroom. A judge has to honor what God just said. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. So God went back to heaven. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, God, even a pillar of stone. And he poured a drink offering. Now this is the first time that this shows up, drink offering. And he poured oil thereon. 2818, when he, when he puts that pillar that he slept on, he put oil on it. 2818. It says, and he poured oil on it. So there's water and there's oil being poured out. So this is the first mention. It is not mentioned in the Levitical priest offerings. Leviticus one says drink offerings not mentioned. Though it's included in the instructions of the sacrifices um, and numbers. It is always poured out and is never drinking or drunken. Now, as far as Christ is this thing, look at Psalms 22, 14. About this drink offering, Jesus Christ. Psalms 22, 14. 24. 22, 14. I am poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. This chapter is the crucifixion psalms of Jesus Christ. It's talking about Jesus Christ on the cross. And it's spoken about being poured out like water, like the drink offering. Isaiah 53, the suffering. Isaiah chapter 53, the suffering Messiah. Let's see what it has to say about the poured out. Isaiah 53. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he has poured out his soul unto death. Poured out. That's what Jesus Christ. Back to Genesis 35. Verse 14. Pour a drink off him thereon, and he poured oil thereon. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spanked with him, Bethel. And they journeyed from Bethel, and I got the map, and there was but a little way come to Ephraim. That's going to be another name of Bethlehem. And Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. Very hard time. And it came to pass when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died. Now she, in death the soul departs. It's recorded by Rachel. 
in her in her birth of Benjamin, her soul departs, she died. And in Luke 16, it says, and he was, died, and he was buried in hell, his eyes. That defiles the Jehovah Witness teaching. That, you know, death is the grave. No. Rachel has a body, soul, and spirit. Her soul has departed from her body. Her soul is going to the eternal life. Her body will go into the grave. She'll be buried. That she called his name Benoai, son of sorrow. But his father called him Benjamin, the son of the right hand. And Rachel died and was buried her body, but not her soul. In the way to Ephra, which is Beth Bethlehem. And this will be Benjamin's lot in the promised land. Beth Benjamin also gets Jerusalem. That's not Judas. Judas given by Benjamin to the priest. And Jacob set up a pillar on her grave. Grave marker. That is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. And I believe it's still there. So they say. Israel journey. And spread his tent beyond the tower of Edar. This is between Bethel and Hebron. He's on the move. I got the map. And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in the land. That Reuben went and laid with Bilhah his father's concubine. He loses that firstborn. Levi and Simeon lost that firstborn right. Now look at 1 Corinthians 5.1. 1 Corinthians 5 1. It's not the only time it happened in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 5 1. Paul writing to the Corinthian church. He says, It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication is not so much as named among the Gentiles. Gentiles don't usually do this. That one should have his father's wife. And that's, Sim that's, that's Simeon. This sin is so strong it wipes Simeon. I mean not Simeon. Reuben. It writes Reuben off as the firstborn. Levi and Simeon are out of it for their murder and deceiving. So the next son. Because Joseph is split into two. Is Reuben. And that's why it's of Reuben. And Israel heard of it. Heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. Right, we got the beginning of a nation. The sons of Leah. Reuben. Jacob's firstborn. But he lost it. And Simeon and Levi. They lost it in chapter 34. Judah. There he is. That's the line of Jesus Christ. And Issachar and Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, Joseph, and now Benjamin. Not Benoni, Benjamin. The sons of Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, Dan. He's a character. Nephtali. Well, out of the land of Nephtali comes Jesus, but he, that's really not really much spoken of. The sons of Zilphah, Leah's handmaid, Gad. Not really much talking about. Asher. Well, you got... Um, Anna, who's of Asher. These are the sons of Jacob, which were born to him in Pater Am, except for Benjamin. Jacob came unto Isaac his father, unto memory. No mention of Rebekah. Rebekah said, The curse be upon me, son. She's dead. Unto the city of Abra, which is Hebron. Where Abraham and Isaac sojourn. So he's in the promised land. And the days of Isaac were a hundred and four score years. A hundred and eighty years. And Isaac gave up the ghost. And died. And was gathered unto his people. Being old and full of days. 
and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. And when you got Isaac and Ishmael buried their father, Abraham, the two boys show up and bury their father, Isaac. And that closes that chapter. A lot of work to do.